Welcome to No Finance, your daily source for small business financing news. Hello, welcome to today's edition of No Finance, where we bring you the latest updates on uh, small business financing. I'm Jackson No, and here's what we are discussing today. Uh, our top story today is about Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry's proposed tax reform package that could significantly impact small businesses in Louisiana. Yeah. The measures will be up for vote this November. Here are the current individual income tax brackets broken down in Louisiana. So for the first $25,000, if you're married, that is taxed at 1.85%. And then if you're single, it's the first $12,500 that you earn. And then moving on, it's 3.5% from $25,000 to $100,000 earned. If you're married and then if you're single, it's from $12,500 to $50,000 that you are getting taxed three and a half. And then the last bracket, you're getting taxed 4.25% on any dollar earned above $100,000 if you're married and then anything above $50,000 if you are single. And that is the current income tax broken down in Louisiana. Now in 2021, they were actually at 2, 4, and 6% respectively. So they have been lowered just in the last couple of years and now they want to change these tax cuts again to introduce a flat 3% individual income rate and a $12,500 standard deduction for singles, a $25,000 standard deduction for married couples, and a $12,000 retirement income deduction exemption as well. So however, it also repeals the current initial $1,000 deductions for individuals 65 plus, those who are blind and dependents, as well as deductions for net capital gains and disallowed expenses. So. The reform also proposes adding more services that will be taxed at the state level, shifting the tax burden from business owners to uh, consumers. Current corporate income tax rates in Louisiana are among the highest in the nation, with 3.5% for incomes up to 50000 5.5% for incomes between fifty dollars and $150,000, and then 7.5% for incomes above $150,000. The proposed changes include repealing the corporate franchise tax and introducing a flat 3.5% corporate tax across the board. Additionally, the proposal seeks to repeal the inventory tax credits and other tax incentive programs while introducing permanent full expensing for businesses in the first year that you buy equipment or any type of capital investment for the business. So what Louisiana is getting after here with this new tax proposal is what other states have done recently where they're trying to drop that corporate tax rate to entice more corporations to come into the state make Louisiana their home. And then also this, the corporations that are already there, they can retain more earnings and then they can hire more employees and grow their business. And that's going to add to the tax base as well, but it's really to entice more corporations. And when you have more corporations there, you're going to have more jobs, the more jobs, the more people that have salaries and they're paying taxes. So yes, for the lowest income earners in Louisiana, it is going to raise their taxes. Because if they're going to do an individual income tax rate where it's flat across the board, they were paid like 1.5 or 1.8% before. Now it's going to be uh, 3% across the board. So for those low income earners, it's going to be more, more for them. But overall for the economy, it's going to lower those corporate tax rates. Again, that's inviting economic growth because you're retaining more of the income and then you're going to be able to use that to hire employees, grow the business, et cetera. Same thing with the uh, small business owner. A lot of those small business owners have passed through entities, meaning they're an S-Corp, an LLC, or a sole proprietorship. So the way that their tax is actually on an individual income tax basis for right now, with the Trump tax cuts until the end of 2025, if those don't get renewed, they do have a 20% tax deduction right off the top. Those are just for the small business owners, not for the corporations. If they have a taxable income of $100,000, well, now with that 20% deduction, now they're taxed on 80,000, not 100. This proposal is going to help those small business owners as well, because they're going to retain more of their income and small businesses really keep the economy going. So uh, on the flip side, the way that this levels out is increase sales tax, or there's going to be a sales tax for more services provided. So the end consumer is going to end up paying more, but on the flip side, they are paying less in taxes now. So it'll even out. But that's why they want to promote economic growth. In other news, the Arlington Economic Development Corporation 
is offering a $100,000 no interest loan for startups, expansion, staffing, and other purposes. If you own an Arlington-based business, be sure to go to the Arlington Economic Development website and see if you qualify there. It's pretty simple to fill out the application. Moving on, Ernst & Young made a macroeconomic analysis on the 20% uh, tax deduction showing that if you made the law permanent, it could create 1.2 million jobs per year for the next 10 years and 2.4 million jobs annually after that. This would result in a $758 million GDP increase in the small business sector over the first 10 years and a $150 billion for that same small business sector annually after that. Meanwhile, in NFIB, that's the National Federation of Independent Businesses, survey indicates that 59% of small business owners believe eliminating the 20% tax deduction would ne negatively impact their business, with implications such as price increases, postponed investments, and canceled hiring. The NFIB uh, president, Brad Close, emphasized the importance of the 20% small business tax deduction, stating that it allows small business owners to grow, uh, hire employees, raise wages, and get back to their communities. He stressed the need for Congress and the administration to make this, this deduction permanent to avoid a massive tax hike for small businesses. And finally, we turn to Florida, where a small business emergency bridge loan program has been introduced to support affected small businesses. The program offers zero interest loans up to $15,000 for most businesses with amounts to $100,000 if your business is in the agriculture or aquaculture industry. The loan term is one year and businesses must meet specific criteria to become eligible. To qualify for this loan, Florida businesses must be located in the disaster-affected areas from the recent hurricanes, have been in business before October 5th, and employ fewer than 100 individuals. They also need a credit score of 600 or higher. Um, ineligible businesses include short-term rentals, illegal activities, speculation industries, uh, multi-sales distribution, gambling, and businesses owned by individuals on parole. Required documents include a driver's license or passport of all the owners, current and previous years tax returns, current personal tax returns for all the owners, proof of at least two employees or sole proprietorship status in a quitted check. That's it for uh, October 17th, 2024 edition of No Finance News. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated with the latest uh, news in small business finance. Have a great day and we will see you guys again tomorrow.